Welcome to Show Studios Fashion Radio, the podcast video series exploring the remarkable relationship between fashion and music. Every week we'll be joined by fashion's biggest names and the talent of tomorrow as they share their 10 life-defining tunes and the stories behind them. I'm your host, DJ Fat Tony, and today's fiery guest has graced the covers of fashion magazines around the world. From Oldham to the runways of Milan, Paris and New York, her journey to becoming one of fashion's most sought-out faces was recounted in her critically acclaimed autobiography, The Red Flame, A Journey of a Woman. While not giving up fashion anytime soon, her songbird vocals have led her to exploring a musical career with her third studio album. Yes, that's three studio albums. Green being released last year. It's my dear friend, Karen Elson. Hi everyone, welcome to this week's (laughs) Fashion Radio. I'm DJ Fat Tony and this is Show Studio. And today we're joined by a legend in her own right. Someone who's so special and, you know, what can I say, apart from Karen and Elson? Hiya, Tony. How are you? I'm all right, darling. How are you? I'm good. We've been having a laugh before we started doing this podcast. We've we've probably exhausted the conversation. We have. We've wrecked everyone already. Everyone, if only you could be a little, like, fly on the wall. You were at the top of my list, actually, to get you on here. Really? Yeah, because you know... And then I let you down horribly, didn't I? No, no, your song playlist. (laughs) We'll talk about that in a minute. But no, you were on my list because I I just felt that you had so much to give and so much... Because what fashion radio is about... It's about fashion and music and how they collide. Right. And, and you know, when we when it people if we invite people on to play music, it's a totally different ball game because right. we're listening to something, so right. the conversation doesn't flow. With right. this, we just have a conversation right. about your magic moments. And you have a lot of magic I moments, do. Karen yeah. Elson. An awful lot of magic so moments. So do you, Tony. I know, but you know what? That's why I wanted you on because it's just like your career is just so uh, there's so much diversity in it. Right. Do you know what I'm saying to yeah, you? Yeah, I do. And, 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 and you really are, like, you're, you're a dark horse. <laughs> you are a dark horse. I am a little bit of a dark horse. You are, because... I come in and sneak up and then I go away back to my little yeah, weird world. But no, you're right, you I are. am a bit of a dark horse. And I like that about you. I like that. I like the fact that you're not walking around carrying placards, do you know what I mean, <laughs> with your name written on it. You're not doing that. And we know so many people that do that. Yes, we do. And make such a fuss about who they are yeah, because yeah, they're yeah. so insecure. And I don't... See, well, I have the opposite thing, though, with me, honestly, is that I almost... My secret weapon is that I can become many people and then I can vanish. And that is, And That's... that is... I don't want ever to be... Look, if it's about me on the shoot, that's great. And yeah. that's my job. But it's my job, right? Yeah. So I don't need to live the life. I don't believe I don't believe in that. I'm too I'm too independent. But do you not think, sense. right? When you're a model, right, right, like that's what you just described, that when you're on a shoot and you come and you have many different faces, yeah. that's what your job is. That right? is my job, yeah. A lot of models saying no names that have been around a while saying no names, uh, make it all about them. <laughs> and, you know, so automatically the whole campaign becomes them. Right, And right. you don't do that. You have this magic about you that you... You're you're like a, cam- a blank canvas yeah, yeah, on yeah. so many levels. Yeah. And, you know, there's this real, like... When you look at you, like I'm sitting opposite yeah, yeah. you now, there's like a real innocence to your face. Right. And I think that also is why I've sort of lasted as long as I mm. have. Is that, yeah, and it's honestly, a lot of it is to do with my personality as well. Like I actually am kind, I'm, I'm an extrovert and I'm an introvert yeah. at the same time. So I never, I've... I've always been quite insecure, if that makes sense. So I think that's why I'm a really good model is because I'm never quite comfortable in my skin. So when a person transforms me into something else, it's like, oh, I don't have to think about how I look or feel insecure about how I am or who I am. I can be transformed. But then it's so funny, like the business of fashion and going out and about. I've got my fashion friends, but I've never, I don't know, I've never wanted to be a famous person, mm. if that makes sense. I've always seen that that's actually quite sad. Mm. And that well, we a lot see of, what happens to them. Yeah, there's a lot of pain involved in it. And when you start losing track of, I've always craved like, I know it sounds really boring of me, but I've always craved like a quiet, normal mm. life. And then I come and do this and it's like the circus and I'm a good circus act and I'm a good circus performer. But then I slip back into sort of a quieter yeah. life. I'm, I'm a strange bird, even to myself. I, think, I'm a, I'm a, I am a bit of a dark horse. I'm a, I'm a bit sort of, you know, you'll know. you see with all the songs, I'm a bit like, uh, what oh I God. think people think of me and what they think I am, I'm actually very different. 
than, yeah. than all of that. And I'm actually a little bit weirder and a little bit more insular. And not oh, you're a definitely sort of, the weirder side of I things. I am. I am on the weirder side of things. And Which I, is amazing. I, but, I have, but I have to be. Yeah, it's the only great. way I can but be. You, you talked about the insecurity about yeah. stuff because, you know, when we microdose in insecurity, mm -hmm. it's a superpower. Yeah. It's when we take too much yeah, of it, it becomes yeah. Yeah. The, the worst feeling and yeah. that we put ourselves in these places. But, you know, there's always an edge that gives you that something to thrive towards when we've got that insecurity. Because I, on the way to a gig, right. I pray, right. I'm like every gig is, is Madison Square Garden, right. whether it be right. really small or whether it would be right. really big, they're all the same. Yeah. And I I have to hand that over. I have to voice it, my insecurity yeah. around it. Because I always think everyone's going to hate me. I suffer oh, with imposter too. syndrome. Me too. But it keeps me on my toes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never, I've never felt like I fit in. I've been in fashion. I'm 44 years old. I started when I was 15. It's almost 30 years. And I still walk on set and have that, everyone's going to figure out yeah, that they're I'm find just out, Karen yeah. from Oldham and I've blagged my way through this industry. But in a way that you're so right, that's my superpower. But, you know, there's been moments where it's got too, the voices have got too yeah, dark and I yeah, have to sort of rein it in. I mean, I'm, I, I always walk on a tightrope. I'm never, I, I am, like I said, it's, I think it's part upbringing. I grew up in Northern England. Uh -huh. I grew up in a very sort of, you know, working class tough northern family and I was always a sensitive super sensitive super creative kid and I still am I'm still that and I have kids I was saying this to my daughter the other day she was feeling like sad about something and I just had to remind her I might like, look all the best people all the most brilliant creative people I've ever met they feel things 25 times 50 times 100 times more than the regular person and I'm like it's like a superpower but it's also it's a blessing and a curse yeah it really so is so I've been blessed and cursed it's about with balance yeah I've been it's blessed and cursed with all of that but that's why I fit well in fashion because I'm always in one sense trying to escape myself yeah and I'm good at that yeah and, that, and I love being part of that creative process but at the same time the dark side of that is never feeling like you belong mm -hmm. you know but again I've, you've got to just own it at a certain point go that's I agree who I am you. that's who I am that's I'm not going to change at this point you know as long as I just take good care of myself and not let the ghosts get too loud the ghosts are good the ghosts as long as they're you know they're, they're they I mean, push you <laughs> 30, year, 30 years of being in a fickle world of fashion oh, it's hard for anyone isn't it it really is it, it really takes is. a toll and then sometimes you have to remember what's real and what's not real uh -huh. and you have to remember like I think that's why I live in Nashville as well because yeah. I don't ever want to be so like devoid of of normal life where normal things but, or like people you interact with it's like you know the black life. cabbie you get in and yeah. you have a proper conversation i don't ever want to lose i don't ever want to think i'm better no. than anyone else i don't because i know what how ugly that is when you think like that so let's move straight into track number one which is childhood yeah. A track that that influenced your personal style and taste. So I'm going to do a wild one. So when I was, I think I was like 12 or 13 and watching Top of the Pops and I saw The Cure yeah, for the amazing. first time and it was close to me mm. and I'd never seen anything like it. You know, like everything had then had been sort of like the boy band or, or just very homogenous sort of prefab music you yeah. know it's like stock Aiken what is it and well, you know and Waterman it, it, was that the ones who did Kylie and I'm a massive Kylie but fan you know what but it's that, called we call it post disco yeah it, so yeah. it's post disco so yeah. you had the, all the amazing disco then we yeah. went into house music and then we went post disco yeah. which became synthesized manufactured pop yeah I just had a moment where I just I saw him He's amazing. all dressed up and but like sort of it reminded me I was like oh there's people like me there's people who are a little awkward in their skin yeah very they're insecure a little, about, a little yeah. sort of like kooky a little goth I realized I'm like oh I gravitate towards this and I was like maybe I'm a goth and I found some identity mm. and I'd never had that before yeah. I'd never I always felt like I um I never fitted in yeah. you know it's like the era of you know, like the Baywatch girls. And <laughs> I am like pale, scrawny, lanky, bad hair. And I looked at Robert Smith and I went, oh, maybe I can dye my hair black and I can put a bunch of makeup on. And I yeah. just, I saw, I saw more my people. More crime watch than Baywatch. Oh right? my God, more, definitely more crime <laughs> watch than Baywatch. <laughs> but I saw that video and I saw him, the cure on top of the pops. And I remember having this sort of, aha, I think I found my people mm. moment. So that for me sort of schooled me then. So it, I led into PJ Harvey, got into Nick Cave. And I went all like Susie Sue. 
and it just dis- I discovered my kind of music. But that's that's a really magical point in life, moment in life, is when we when we do discover our people. Yeah, that we and completely music is a big gravitate part of that. to. Of course, I love the Cure. I love the Cure. I love the the Forest. Right, a Forest, forest. is oh my, my favorite God. song. Just I was going to say a Forest, that... but I was like, let's not go too sad. I was like, no, let's... but it's not. It was, close, it's just... it was close to me. Was the first song I saw. So good. And then I went to HMV and I bought you know the tape. In my little I, tape I, I had it on seven inch in the grey sleeve sometimes with the trees forest. on the front of oh, the forest. Oh my God. It just, it, that was like I found my people and I found my soundtrack and would walk to school. You know, I was really bullied when I was a kid. Mm. I really, really didn't fit in. And it was like every day walking to school was hazardous because there was just people who wanted to beat me, beat mm-hmm, me up just for fucking being, excuse my language, just for beep being a like n- looking different, right? So yeah. I would put that music on and it was like my soundtrack yeah. to this sort of bleak Northern English upbringing yeah. and it made me think and feel like I belonged, basically. Well, that's that's the, the power of music. It is. And, you know, um, and it, it it just has the ability to change everything. It does and make no, you feel less alone. Totally. And it made me feel less well, alone. I always say, you know, I, did, I, I said in an interview that you'll never be alone as long as you listen to Magic FM. Oh, my God. And it's a real, it's really true because it, those, what they do on those radio stations yeah. is play this eclectic mix of everything yeah, that you love. Everything they, you grew up with as well. They have the ability to play it at the right time. Yeah. It's so bizarre. It's funny that you even mentioned that because when I got in last night, I flew in from New York yeah. last night and it was late. It was like midnight. I go into my hotel and my, the, the driver had Magic FM on and it was like Belinda Carlisle, amazing. like um, Circle in the Sand, then into the Bangles. It's amazing, isn't it? Into, what's the song? Eternal Flame. And it was all the songs. I'm like, oh my God, this is just brings me back. Yeah. And that's that's the power of music, you know. It and is. the fact that, you know, you found your people, you found your identity through music. Yeah. That I did. took you into a whole, you know, because when we listen to something, right? Yeah. It's one thing, but when we feel something, it's a different thing it's entirely. And when you feel music, you suddenly can then, it, bra- it branches out into how you look, yeah. how you dress, yeah, how you absolutely. feel about yourself. So right? when I started in fashion, it was like, these are the people I gravitated towards. Yeah. And then finally meeting people who are like, oh, I like that. Yeah. Or then introduce you to so much. I've discovered so much music from fashion. Yeah. I mean, I, I just being on set and someone listening to something when I was a teenager and going, oh, that's yeah. cool. That's cool music. You know, yeah. I've definitely discovered a lot through that. Okay, track two. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, it's from a film which is important to you. Yes, it is. Harold which and Ward. Harold and Ward. <laughs> I, I love know. this one. Cat Stevens, The Wind. So this introduced me to Cat Stevens when I first watched Harold and Maud. And Harold and Maud, again, I could so relate to the character yeah, as well, even though, again, grew up in a working class family. But you see Harold, who is this sort of depressed, <laughs> you know, it, it, and this is a complicated subject matter. It's like the, I wonder how this will go today, because the premise of the film, Harold and Maud, is that Harold is constantly trying to hurt himself. Mm-hmm. And no, none of the adults are noticing him. He's like such an inconvenience and then he meets Maud this older lady who who is about she's like in her 80s 90s and she then what's the word she kills herself yeah and yeah. it's quite it sounds it sounds quite dark but it's actually the most romantic movie mm. I've ever seen in my life and Cat Stevens does the soundtrack Yusuf Islam does the soundtrack and The Wind I remember when I first heard this song The Wind and there's another song If You Want to Sing Out Sing Out and it just it was like my heart broke it was just the sweetest soundtrack to this really dark love story but also you know when you listen to the lyrics of The Wind you just think God this is transcendent and whenever I'm down that is a song I want to listen to That's the next question do you listen to it now? Oh I still do I love I love Cat Stevens Mm. I mean I feel like he was tapped into something really big Yeah totally When you listen to the lyrics the first cut is the deepest Yeah amazing I mean God isn't that that, isn't that the truth like just (laughs) you know Wild (laughs) World is one of the most scathing songs ever written but the most beautiful and yeah, this the soundtrack from Harold and Maud, The Wind, If You Wanna Sing Out, Don't Be Shy. There's just like this like beautiful wisdom and innocence. What do you listen day to day? Now oh. I read this earlier and I thought, oh my god, she's such a depressing cow. <laughs> it's like <laughs> I was like, what the I fuck? I love I love the sad songs. I am a sad song, just uh, what there's I say? sad songs and then there's this group. But then there's the Velvet Underground. Yes. And I love the Velvet Underground. But you know, I also love from the Velvet Underground, like Candy says, Oh mm. my God, or Sweet Jane, or even what, you know, Velvet Underground and Nico, Femme yeah, Fatale. Yeah, no, 
Oh, that, Femme Fatale is amazing. Femme Fatale is such a great song. And I don't know, I feel like, again, in the same vein as I'm going in, Lou Reed was such a great romantic. Mm. And he was a punk as well. And he was also scathing and brilliant but he was he was an addict he was exactly you just, you just basically described I have, every addict in I have, I have. scathing and you he, know but, they but, was but that was his brilliance right that was his brilliance and also just when you I also love that he was such a you know, especially with Candy Says like the line Candy Says I've come to hate my body and all that yeah. requires in this world and Candy Darling being you know a, a trans actress yeah, and, totally. and and that has always stuck with me. And, you know, for my own personal reasons, that line always stuck with me as a model mm. because there's so many times where I'm on set and I'm like, I've come to hate my body and all that, require, all that it requires in this world. I have felt that. I felt mm. that in fashion. I felt like horrified. How by did you it. overcome that? <sighs> that feeling? Um, a lot of is therapy. It, it, a lot, it, a lot. I mean, honestly, I've had to do a lot of, a lot of like, it's a t like I said earlier, it's a tightrope that I walk on of the imposter syndrome and, you know, every fucking, every fashion week where I'm like, God almighty, like, oh, I think things and the, always the narrative comes back. But I think I've had to learn to feel uncomfortable, feel mm. better about feeling uncomfortable yeah. and feel better about not. It's like, all right, I'm walking into a situation where I feel like everyone's judging me. And yes, they are. Of course. But you know what? It's all right. It's but, all right. And, and, and I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't have the magical solution. It's just I've had to do a lot well, of work can on I myself. Can I just tell you something? You do have the magical solution right. because you're doing it and you do it with right. such vigor and you do it with such grace. I've got to work on myself. I mean, that is, that is therapy has been a godsend for me. I mean, I've been in therapy since I was, I mean, I was a kid when I was in therapy, but because I was one of those yeah, kids who needed course. it, you yeah. know, but, but my entire life, like I go in and out of yeah. therapy, but I, I always know... And I'm like, it's time for me to check in with myself because that's magical. It's 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 saved me. It that's really, magical. It has absolutely, a lot of saved people me. don't know when to check in. No, with themselves. And I that's when I need it because otherwise I'll go to really yeah. dark places. And I know that for, bef you know, I've been really fortunate in the sense where my poison has never been like drugs or yeah. alcohol, but my poison has been my mind. Mm. You know, my yeah. mind has been my biggest enemy I mean, because I sometimes like will rob my, I, I sabotage myself in other ways. Oh. And, and I have had to learn to go, okay, I have that instinct in me and I have that pull. And sometimes when stuff's going good for me, I want to fuck it all up. Honey, I'm 16 <laughs> years sober and I still, those, those thoughts and that behaviour for the last 14 yeah. years has completely controlled my life. Yeah. I was sober, but I, I was still right. having those thoughts and that thought process right. of I'm never enough. Yeah. Nothing's ever yeah. enough for me. I, I always feel less than. Right. And it's only since I wrote my book and I got it out there and I started to talk about that stuff that I found self-compassion. Yeah. I found this self-love for myself. Kind of a little bit of like, you know, it's like, oh, fuck it, here I am. This is what I do. Yeah, this is This me. is where I'm going. This, this is, is me. who I am. And I think even getting older, mm. you know, I've got a teenage daughter. I've got a 16-year-old and a 15-year-old son. And I'm looking at my teenagers now and I'm seeing the things I went through and seeing them going yeah. through it. And it's sort of given me a bit more compassion for myself mm. to sort of go, oh. It's really important. It's all right. It's ourselves. all right. But that song, the Velvet Underground song, Candy Says, and just anything by Lou Reed just always has resonated that sort of that. The brilliance that of Lou Reed, though, is because he wrote about the uh, whole, you know, the, was, like all about his friends. Him. Yeah, all about his friends. It's exactly. amazing. The whole album's about his mates. Yeah. And it's just like, it's so good. Yeah. And it, like I you said, know, it, pushed, it pushed the boundaries yeah. of so many things as well. Yeah. And I think sort of he brought a, like, he was the mouthpiece for so many other people, people in his life, sort of in a world. How old is that? You know, like, how old is that album? And, right. and the fact that he was, like, singing about trans yeah. at, back and then. and trans feelings. And, but speaking about the 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 pain of being, in like, being stuck in, in your body, body. Like, yeah. how profoundly beautiful is that? So that's why I, I love that. why I love that. Right, so this one I'm not too sure about either. Yeah. What do you listen to when you're working? <laughs> oh, I love the Stones. Stones and Bowie. <laughs> Stones and David Oh, listen, Bowie. don't put them in the same bracket. Okay. Stones are one thing and Bowie's another. All right, all right. Well, you, here's, you know, the, here's the problem I have on set these days is that no one can ever bloody decide what music they're going to listen to. Yeah. Or if you've got this, like weird sort of like abstract music and I'm like that's not doing anything for me or I'm like either give me some like disco or give me like miss you by the stones give me something sexy give you want me something, some feel good music yeah you right. want something that I can sort of 
I'd be like, oh, that, that's the tune. Also, the Stones remind me of my dad. My dad's such a rocker. Oh, there you go. Then Stones, there's a reason the Stones, for that. So it's funny because growing up Northern England, my dad was such a rocker and he loved the Stones. He loves the Beatles, loves like Deep Purple and yeah. Eric Clapton. And I grew up with all that, all that music. So I think sometimes whenever you're on set, it's more because... A lot of people in fashion, as we well know, have really horrible music taste. So sometimes you have to Don't we know just it? put something on that it's like everyone knows this. But you know, there's like certain certain albums of the Stones that are really sexy. But at the same time, you're right. With Bowie, I would say Bowie's probably more of a people pleaser. Yeah. And I love Bowie. I mean, yeah. he's honestly one of my favorite favorite he, artists. He's popped up period. a lot on this podcast. Oh, uh, an awful lot. I mean, why because he, he? Was, cause he was a shapeshifter. Well, you know, when you talk about music and fashion together, it's Bowie. Yeah. You know, that, 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 you know, it, it, innovator. You need, it, it, totally. Yeah, 100%. absolute innovator. And it was like the, everything from the visual to the music, which not a lot of people can manage both. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Well, you know, now going, me, yeah, go, yeah, it's like I, I go from sad to sadder, by the way, people. So, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> la, la, la. Okay. What do you listen to when you're creating? Oh I my don't God, mean... I'm such a little, again, I'm back to my like sad ways. Like the, the, the secret part of me is that I love all kinds of music. So when I, when I'm like, you know, if I'm in my head creating, thinking, I need something that I'm not going to almost without words. So for me, it's, it's, Max Richter or Dustin O'Halloran, who's this brilliant composer, or Brian Eno, like mm. Brian Eno's sort of like soundtrack. Well, it, it's, it, it's, 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 and also it's kind of like white noise in the background that you, you relate but to, it's but it's moving. emotional. It's emotional. Yeah, it's emotional. It's emotional. Moving. I mean, but, but so is white noise. Yeah, exactly. You know, if you exactly. tune into anything you tune into, yeah. it, it lifts your emotions and takes you to well, places that's the power that it's of music. To, it's that's feeling, it's isn't it? So when I'm, when I'm, you know, it's again, because I think people see me in a page of a magazine and they think that I'm this sort of like, <laughs> can I say this, cunty Go, extrovert? Of course you can say it. I, I, I've said cunt on this, on this podcast more times. But at the same time, I'm like, I can be, I can play the part of being country, cunty extrovert. Yeah. But my real true self is like quiet mouse, <laughs> like, quiet goth you know mouse. What? You, have you met me? I'm actually, I, you know, everyone always thinks, oh, I'm so loud and so big. I, there's nothing more I like to do I sit at home in silence. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Like literally, and I'll, and I'll put on some George Michael or oh, I'll change the yeah. mood yeah, yeah, yeah. by putting on some delight or yeah. whatever I put yeah. on at home. Yeah. You know, because it's really important, you know, but it's like I, you know, I've used my mouth and I've used my cunty behaviour right. as as a, a shield for many years. Have, and I don't yeah. need that shield anymore. Yeah, yeah. we both you know, have. I just have humour now. They're totally different things. Exactly. It's very, it's very different. I'm okay, what song best represents the sound of your studio? <laughs> I might change this, actually. Yeah, go on. Go on. I think I, I'm going to change it. I'm looking at it. I'm like, oh, no. So I, uh, now people are like, now. we're never going to her studio. We're not going around her house for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going out on the night out of her. Let's change that. What songs represents the sound of my studio in my house? Um, we, we're going down the Nick Cave Road, aren't we? Yeah, so, we are. Let's. You know, I do love Boatman's Call, that album. Uh -huh. I think it's really beautiful. But then, actually, when I first started listening to Nick Cave, it was like Red Right Hand. And <laughs> like, oh, I love Red the Right Hand so much. Oh, it's the sexiest song. And Diana. Um, and then also, Do You Love Me? Actually, that's the song. That's the one, right? Do You Love Me at My Home? That is the, I mean, that is one of the most... Gorgeous, sexiest song. It just does it for you, right? Oh, it does. Nick Cave does it for me too, though. I mean, I again. But how can he not? I mean, Do you get what I'm saying, Joe? Everything. I want to dress like Nick Cave, and I want to dress like Susie, and I want to mm. be their like redheaded stepchild, and I want to be. <laughs> I, I want to be their redheaded stepchild, and just be like, "What do you need, Nick? What do you need, Susie? I'll just be your." <laughs> that's. I think that that's an assistant, not a stepchild. Oh yeah, I guess that is. But I, I, I want to be their adored stepchild. Then yeah, I'll of course. The, you want yeah, them to I, dress you I up. The, and I want them want to, to adore me. I want Nick to give me music. I want Susie to dress me, and I want to like. Listen to Do You Love Me all the time. I don't really want much in life, do I you? Don't, I don't, I don't. Just the world. Just tell them. I'm sure they'll, they'll, they'll happily <laughs> Let me oblige. be your redheaded stepchild, please. Right, number seven. Yeah. Right, the most important song you've ever heard from a catwalk show. This is my <laughs> favourite question out of all the questions because I think it's the most important one in so many levels because... When we first go to our fashion show, our uh, first show, yeah. and we're like blown away by it. Yeah. And then we go to another show and it's just like, oh, do you mm. know what I mean? Mm. It, it's the music within a show that takes it you to that. The, it complements the, um, there's when there's good music in a show, 
it transports the mood, the spirit, yeah, the totally. clothes. And we've all like, and when there's bad music in a show, it's almost distracting. Well, from... you leave thinking about the music, you don't leave thinking yeah, about you the don't, collection. Exactly. So I had a really unique experience. It was Tom Ford's very first Amazing. Tom Ford collection. Yeah. And I don't know, it was one of those moments where I'm like, we're doing the rehearsal and I'm like, wait, you're playing my song. This song I did called Pretty Babies. And he's like, I love this song. And we're doing the rehearsal and Beyonce is walking out to my song. I mean, okay. Oh, Julianne you just Moore, redeemed yourself. Julianne Moore. And then, you know, Lauren Hutton. Lauren Hutton. Lauren oh, Hutton. The I remember Lauren Hutton. The Lauren Hutton, who I remember her because she was yelling at Charlotte Tilbury, which was genius. Charlotte had done the makeup. <laughs> she was like, I hate it. And she wiped all the makeup off. And I just remember oh, seeing Charlotte like her. looking at her. And I was like, well, she's Lauren Hutton. I love she can, Lauren she can, Hutton. She can do that. And um, yeah, it was just wild to see Beyonce. And then I was walking out to my song. It was just one but of what those- what moment, right? One of those pinch me moments. And it was, in a, it was in a store uptown. It was very small and really just such a tender moment. And I couldn't believe, because who am I compared to all those people? So did he have you in the show because he loved the track or did he... I think not... he had me in the show because I've been, I've worked with Tom for years. Yeah. And he was at Gucci. He and he loved, on, his, he loved And we've song. always had a strong relationship and he really, but he really liked the song and he thought it would be like a sweet little That's homage. Lovely. But again, to see... The Tom queen, fucking Ford. Tom Ford, but then you've got all these people, all these people <laughs> I admire and look yeah, up to, all these women I really look yeah. up to walking out to power, my power song. women. And I, I couldn't believe it. And it was sort of this that beautiful, very rare moment, which really happens very rare, for me at least. Because, you know, people really know me as a model. My hobby is I sing for my supper. Yeah. I'll, I'll be like, I, I've got reasonable expectations about my music career. So I'm a lounge singer now. I'll sing at Cafe Carlisle, you know, like that's... But it's that, more, but that, it's but, fun, but I'm but not... But don't undersell that. That's, I'm, that's I'm incredible. To, I'm not trying to undersell it's un, it. It's incredible that you do that. But it's my love. That. It's my love. Like, I, there you go. I've got to, you there know, you go. I'm, again, I've got to do the things I love. But I also understand that that was a moment where Tom was being really sweet yeah. and tender Beautiful. to me and really being supportive of me starting to sing and to do it in the presence of these incredible women and have them walking out to my song. Yeah. I was like, this is never going to happen again. It never has. And it was a once in a moment, but, once in a lifetime, unique moment. And then Tom's first show. So yeah, that was special. Okay, best music video in terms of fashion. Um, I love Life on Mars, directed by Mick Rock for David Bowie. And I just feel like, again, Bowie, as we said earlier, the intersection between Bowie with fashion, art, music. He had that trifecta, yeah. you know? Like, come on, there's never been a performer like David no. Bowie. We were not worthy. No. I mean, there is something about, and I love the persona, sort of the, you know, the sort of part man, part alien. Even his last record, I was saying this at work actually today, his last record, Black Star. Yeah, Black Star. was one of the most beautiful records I've heard in years. It gives me goosebumps to this day because I also, you also realize it is a man's last sort of, like... It, you know, the one line, like, look at me, man, I'm in heaven. Yeah, he you know, knew. And it's, he knew. He and knew. It's, and, but to the very end, David Bowie was David Bowie. Oh, yeah. And there's something about, like, life on Mars, the colors, the fashion. I feel like he started something and we have all been trying to copy him ever since. 100%. Like, he was a true original, 100%. which is really rare to say, an original. And again, even just as far as, like, for for a while, you know, with Bowie, he really, another one who sort of transcended, like, you know what is masculinity what is femininity you can but be but without you can saying be both. it he you didn't can be but fluid. he didn't put the, the thing about Bowie was right. there was he didn't put any labels right, on it right 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 didn't say okay I'm this I'm that this right. is my pronouns what he right. did was he was himself yeah exactly and that's where the magic I saw came an, from I saw an interview and I'm trying to remember what exactly he said but somebody was like God, sometimes when you look at these old interviews and you realize how horrible the interviewer yeah, was vile, right? and what they're saying <laughs> and it was sort of like oh you 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 like boys, you like girls. And he he made this comment like, I like humans, mm. you know? And I was like, oh God, that's so, so beautiful, you mm -hmm. know? I work in fashion, so we're around so many different types of people. I never, ever in my life, you want to be who you want to be. You want to dress how you want to dress. You want to love who you want to love. It's crazy. I don't have a problem with that, you my know? It's like For me, the lines are, if you're a bully and you're rude to people, if you're racist, homophobic, or like, you know, abusive. I don't have time for any of that shit yeah. ever. But if you want to love someone, if you want to dress in a certain way, you want to, you know, declare to the world that you're, you know, that you don't ha subscribe to gender, more power to you. Totally, 100%. You know, more power my to you. My favorite complaint is though that definitely the, the uh, 
the non-gender toilets, you know, that oh, mention going with to, that. has anyone ever been on an aeroplane? <laughs> I'm sorry, but hang on. They, well they, said, they, they, well said. You make you, actually a really good point. But then also <sighs> the ones who are sort of transphobic and saying like... They can't use... Um, that, you they, know, it's like, well, what's your imagination? Like I, as, a, as a person who has many trans friends, I'm not, I'm not like, we're sexualizing. We're, we're, we're confusing sex and gender. Oh, and there's 100%. two, it's two different things. Gender and gender identity it's just how you feel in your skin and who you identify sexual as. Sexual orientation is a totally different these thing entirely. Sexu- exactly. And I think what the biggest, like what these people are doing is putting, sexualizing a trans person and it's nothing to do with that. Well, and it's like, oh, the girls, the girls, you can't, you know. And it's like, I'm, I fear more sincerely as a woman. I fear a, like, my ex- my sort of experiences in life when I've had negative experiences, it's always been with a white straight man. Yeah, of course it is. When I've been followed, yeah. when I've been walking down the street, when I've been sexually harassed, it's never been by anybody but probably historically nine... a white male. So it's like, no, I fear, I fear that I don't but ever But they're fear... probably the ones that are doing all the keyboard assassination anyway. The ones that are following well, you down threatened. the street. Do you it's know what like I mean? the of incels. It's like well, there's been a big sea change in the world right now. There's been a lot, thankfully, there's been a lot of real progress. And I think it's just, again, in any society, it's where I'll get a bit nerdy, whenever there's progress, there's always people trying to pull it back. And it's this ebb and flow and push and pull. And you just have to keep, I think social media makes things a lot worse these days because yeah, we can 100%. all have a fucking opinion. Even I've clocked myself recently. Like, yeah, well, you're doing. where am I? Oh, God, like I can get really opinionated and I am like a justice person when yeah. I see people not being treated f- fairly I don't like it but I've had to learn the hard way because I realise we're all hypocrites mm. we're all hypocrites At especially in fashion day, we're all hypocrites it boils back down to is there fucking life on Mars is there life is on there Mars is there life on Mars probably especially you know now that. with all these <laughs> balloons I'm like oh here they're coming <laughs> back for me they're amazing <laughs> I love the balloons right nine a song from a musician oh, you'd wish to work another, with living another, or dead another, this is Nick's question living or dead it's beyond living or dead. Living or dead. <laughs> I love it. Well, you know, I'm a big Leonard Cohen fan. Yeah, I agree I with you on this one. And Hallelujah is Best such song. a gorgeous song, but then the way Jeff Buckley interpreted that, it's actually one of the most beautiful, tender, saddest, most romantic love songs. I feel like Leonard Cohen wrote a song that describes love from beginning, middle mm. to end, and so poetically, so beautiful, because again, I'm a big emo bleeding goth heart. I had to pick something that just, it makes me cry every time. Mm. Every time I listen to that song, the way it's like the breath Jeff Buckley takes, like, <sighs> before he goes song. into this line, like, you know, maybe there's a God above, but all I've ever learned from love is how to shoot somebody who outdrew you. I'm like, it, it, it chokes me up every single time. I, I just cannot. So that for me is, it's, it's just, what can I say? I am a romantic. You I'm are a, a romantic. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bleeding heart romantic. <laughs> Oh, hi, puppy. Oh, there goes my dad. <laughs> and on point there. Thank you, Taylor. Oh, my God. My dog What's her name again? Taylor. Rini. Rini oh, Taylor. Rini Taylor. Oh, my other dog, yeah. Rini Taylor, that's her name. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's track 10. Yeah. What track represents how you feel about life right now? Oh, I, I, had to, I was like looking at all the song choices and I'm like, bloody hell, Karen Elson, you're such a morbid little, you're <laughs> such a little morbid little bird, aren't you? And I was like, Bill Withers, lovely day. It doesn't get better than It's that, just, right? honestly, it's like, it's like, Every time I hear, I love Bill Withers anyway. I mean, Ain't No Sunshine, you know, it's just such a great song. But Lovely Day, it's like, you know, then I look at you and the world's all right, right with me. me. It's, it's just, it feels like a warm blanket. You it know? is a warm blanket. It feels, it feels like that. And I've got to say, even though I'm like, you know, little weird, depressed, occasionally yeah. dark, dark-sided, you know, I also... I'm really grateful. I'm really grateful for the life I have. And I overwhelmingly, more and more, but the I older I get. Um, I get that from you. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I am, I'm, I'm, you know, sure, like everybody, life can get challenging. It's, but I, I am, compared to, I, I can't stress where I grew up and where I've come and what I've come through and the things I've seen and the thing like, mm. like, I have made such an effort to not get bitter, to not, get bitter in life and there's been moments in life where it could have hardened me that's the way I look at it but it could have hardened me and the older I get the more these days I'm like wide-eyed 
and excited for whatever is going to come next. And when I listen to that Bill Withers song, again, it's like that just represents where my mindset is at. Like, I choose to walk out into the life and say, lovely day. It's mm. going to be a lovely day. I was going to pick another one that's like a... Um, a gospel song called Oh Happy Day yeah, no, as well. Happy oh, happy I'm day. glad you chose Bill Withers. You know, because there's just, again, you've got to err on the side of you've got, you've got to let, you've got to let the light in. That's mm, it. You've got 100%. to let the light in. So that's where my head is at. So I thought last song for this track that represents how I feel about life. You now. redeemed yourself. Bill Withers' Lovely Day, because for many years it was, it was not that. I mean, like I said, I've been blessed and cursed with a, with a, I can see and feel everything. I walk into any room, Tony, I walk into every room. I mean, it's like, a, like a, it's like a psychic secret weapon where I can feel what that person talking to me. I'm like, oh, I know that they're feeling terrible right now, but they're putting on a front. Yeah. I know this person is doing this. I can. Do you know I'm, why? I'm sensitive. Because you've been through it yourself. Yeah, so I can and feel it. And you identify it. I do. It's I like, do. you know, with addiction, I, I can be in a room with 3,000 people and I'll go straight the, to the one with the broken arm. Of course, of course. <laughs> Always. Of course. I, and, and that's the way it you is. You can and feel we, it. We're drawn to it. Yeah, I'm drawn to it. But like I said, sometimes it's like it takes a lot of work for me to like shed that stuff yeah, 100%. as well, you know. But where that's I'm why like, you. Oh. Got to hold some back for yourself. Yeah, yeah. And I do. I do much more these days. I mean, I've learned a lot the past couple of years. My 40s have been, I always say I'm like a fine wine and I get better with age. When mm. I was in my teens, early 20s, even in my 30s, I was struggling so much just trying to be like, everyone like me, everyone love me, please love me, please yeah. like me, please tell me I fit in, please tell me I'm valid and worthy yeah. to be here. And I hit 40 and I was like, oh God, I've got nothing to lose no, anymore no. and it's still you know the fact that I'm 44 Tony the fact that still doing what I do doing what I love what do you mean ruling kind of you're ruling sweetheart. sometimes, you're, you're sometimes. Not, it's not that I'm still I'm doing still, what I'm doing you're fucking ruling I'm still enjoying it as yeah. well that's maybe enjoying it more now than ever because I'm not looking at myself with like I wish I was dot 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 or I wish this person had liked me I'm like at this point mm. You know, if you don't like me, it's all right. I probably don't like you either. As long as you like yourself, that's all that yeah, fucking exactly, matters. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But it took me a long time to figure it out. It really does. It took, it took me 54 years to get to that point. And that's point. why music has been always really important to me is because 100%. music's been the soundtrack to my life. It's been music has been, I always say this about music, it's the most personal art form mm -hmm. because no one can be in your head when you're listening to a song that you're like, oh, you know, it's like, God, this song is killing me right now. Or, you know, I think about years ago, I remember, God, speaking of fashion, hung out with Prince. Yeah. And and we went in his car and he was playing music. And I was like, oh my God, this is the most beautiful thing, beautiful memory. I never want to forget yeah. this. And he was playing the coolest music and yeah. being, you know, Prince was just Prince. such a genius. But I remember when I, like, later I was so touched by that and... I couldn't almost listen to his music for a while because I'd got, I was like, oh, I've, I've met this person. And yeah. I, it took me a minute to be like, yeah, you can. You, Such a genius on you every can, level. Like, on every level. Like, come on, even like, I want to die for you. Like Purple Rain, his guitar playing. I saw recently when he did this George um, Harrison tribute and he did this guitar solo that was like, yeah, like wipe the floor of everybody no. and miss him, miss his artistry. Again, no. music's been my soundtrack. It's been like, when the world's chaotic and when the world's crazy, I can put on music and it's like, oh, I can transport myself elsewhere and I can remember who I am. On that note, I think we should leave it there. I, think I we should. fucking love you, I Karen fucking Elson. love you, Tony. And you know what? That, you know, as I said earlier, I looked at your playlist and I was like, oh. Uh, and you know what? You talking all the way through the magic has just been just an incredible experience. It's personal. So, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, darling. Thank we you. We love you. Long I love you, you so much. <laughs> Bye.